have the idea that yes, they're in an actual class, they don't meet in a physical space, but they have the opportunity to see their classmates or to hear them every now and again. All right, very important. So we're looking at some of the resources that we can use. All of these are actually linked to the, um, the learning activities because it depends on what resources you plan to use. Then you write your activities accordingly or write your activities and then decide what resources you're going to use. So how do we present the content? We have ebooks, all right? And I can only point you to the library database. For example, pharmacy has a big, huge um, access pharmacy database there. And we know EBSCO has come on and they have curriculum builder on this um, UTEC online that we have now. We have curriculum builder, you can create your reading list from different ebooks and whatever it is. So that's one of the ways. I mentioned before that if there is a text, we can always ask the students to purchase a text, a physical text, right? But I do encourage people to use the e-resources since we are online, even if they have to purchase an e-book or if we can source the e-book from the library, still better for the students. Send them to some library database. And believe me, for those who have not yet explored what is at the library, you can take some time to see that it's really doing well with the e-resources. This icon here is a book. So um, it's a book that is built into the LMS. So it has chapters and you can have sub chapters and there's navigation, easy navigation too, forward, backward and stuff like that. So the students are able to, the content is pre presented in a, in a really unique way and it, it, it really uh, makes for good packaging of your content. One of the things about this book, um, LMS book, is that they can't easily copy the material, you know, if you, that you have there. I mean, everybody can copy anything everywhere from the moment it's on a screen, but they can't download what's there. All right. I'm not saying that for anybody to feel fearful to say, oh, all my material is gone. No, no, because whatever we put online, we are ready to share. Yes, we're ready to share whatever is online. Now, there are some other ways to present your content. We might want to put a file up. So you have a PDF document, you have a Word document, we call it a file, you upload it. You can put all those files. They have several tutorial sheets. We put them inside of a folder just so it's neat, you know. IMS content package, a SCORM package type of, it's just an authoring tool. So you have something that you want to show. Maybe it has a video, maybe it has some pictures, whatever it is, you upload it in a zip file to this IMS content and you're able to share with the students. We have labels, NL, N learning object. This now is a very new feature on UTEC Online. It is very useful because it presents courses that you can have your students upload and participate in. All right. So if you're teaching hospitality or whatever else, you can look in the NL learning object and find courses that are directly related to your content that you look through and you approve and your students can also use it because we do encourage students to be able to interact with content as much as possible. Then there's a page, we mentioned the page before, LMS page that we can use to store the content. So self-check exercises are just opportunities for students to practice can come in several ways, right? They can have short quizzes, right we have quizzes online you can it doesn't have to be a long exam it can be 10 questions after each unit so they just practice and it doesn't have to be graded it can be graded you don't have to grade it you can leave it open you can see you can they can try it any number of times unlimited number of times because it's there for practice we have hot potato this is just one of the games that's there so we can have different games 
set it up so your students can practice. So when you have the self-check exercises, you use a hot potato game, you use crossword, whatever it is that's there on the LMS, we can use something. Or they might get an assignment to submit to you, right? Whether you're graded it or not, but the assignment feature can be used for them to do some self-check exercises for you. When it comes to resources, we can also use, you have Word documents, we can take those. PDF files, spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, podcasts, MP4, which is a video file that let's say you create it. MP3 is an audio file. Let's say a podcast, you know, um, things like those. You can have tables. We take all of those to upload as ways of presenting the content to the students. I know that PowerPoint is very popular, but begin from now to, to start, you know, ask us for a tool or research online for a tool that you can use. For example, Screencast-O-Matic, it's free. Use it to, to, up, to put voice on your PowerPoint, yes? Because points, points are, students can't learn so well from points. They need explanation, they need to hear, they need to see and stuff like that. So we're encouraging from now that you use PowerPoint presentation with voice for your online courses. And um, for the audio files, I could mention um, that there's Audacity. So there is, you can always search it up, Audacity, and see how you can use it. Very easy to use to tape your own voice. So you have something you know, for them to, to, to know. It doesn't always have to be print. It can be voice also. Voice and print. Too. If you use Zoom. All right. Mm -hmm. um, hold on, please. Let me just uh, see if I have this person. Platform for meetings and conference call. OK. Right. All right. So we're back. Oh, did I go too far back? Just a second, let me see if I jump the slide. All right. So I'm back. Are you seeing my full screen? No, I stopped sharing, didn't I? Jeez. Hello, is there anyone there? Yes, I'm here. We're waiting. Okay, thank you.
Are we all here? <laughs> I, I made a wrong click. Is everybody still on? Yes. All right, great, thank you. Imagine I'm locking myself out of the meeting. Isn't that bad? All right, so I was saying that, um, I'm going back to, the, to where I was. Just going to be sharing my screen. Okay, so hope we're back now. Okay, everybody. Sorry about that. So I was saying we take in, we take all these types of files. So let's go to the assessment strategy now. It says that this section should be based on your assessment strategies outlined in the syllabus, and it should include authentic assessment activities with real, real world relevance and in keeping with the revised testing and assessment policy. So, um, I don't know if you have come across the testing and assessment policy, but it, the part that has to do with online really talks about the fact that we should use items like scenario-based, you know, um, case studies, that sort of thing to pull out from the students all that they can do on their own without say having to depend on another student. You wanna see unique exercises, you wanna see from their own ex exercises or um, let's say experiences, their own experiences. You wanna see what's happening in their world and ideas like those. Right, so scenario-based problem-based. We know about scenarios already and um, a lot of people tend to use that depends on the type of course you teach. We have problem-based um, sort types of assessment. We have project-based. So the project-based, for example, they can start start off small, but they, what they, whatever they do, it adds up. So at the end, they produce something to show you, you know, a finished product. Um, simulations. Simulations are increasingly uh, becoming increasingly important in the medical field, you know, in fields that it's so expensive and almost impractical for students to see the actual um, demonstrations. Simulations work very well on that. And as a matter of fact, for anything, if there's anything to show and you can find what is a simulation of that actual activity, feel free to use it. Then we have reflections, reflective learning, very important, web quests, experiments, demonstrations, e-portfolios, and peer assessments. So the problem-based assessment, is, I'm just exploring just a few of them because I guess everybody knows um, problem-based assessment. Assessments, student-centered, must be student-centered, must be inquiry-based, yeah? So they have to find out stuff. You can give them something that's a problem that's not finished. You're not finished with the solution, but you start it, or it's poorly written, or it's, you know, it, it needs help. There's a gap to fill, and the students must research, and they must apply whatever in order to come up with the answer okay and of course those kinds of activities are better done in groups so there's collaboration you know they have that opportunity to share ideas and work through a situation the web quest uh, maybe not very popular but it's also another type of inquiry based um, learning method where we go have them in groups and they're solving our problems, a problem, but what they really use is the internet to get their resources, right? So it's, it's they check internet sources, web 
resources in order to solve the problem. Again, this can be facilitated in groups and the students can learn a lot. So it depends on how you write the question, right? Not just nothing, not just recall. Online, people complain about students cheating online. People complain about students um, not doing their own work online and stuff like that. But if we write our assessments in different in a different way, that the students have very small opportunities to um, replicate each other's work because they would be telling you things from where they in their community, wherever they are in the world, they are giving you their experience. Okay, so think about that as we we talk about assessments. Now, where assessment is concerned. Online, there must be rubrics, right? The students have to know what you're marking them for and how they can achieve the best, okay? This is also for face-to-face. -face. But since I'm online, let me stick to online. We have to have something to guide them. This guidance is for you when you're marking, but it's very helpful for the students because, okay, they want it, it grade four out of four. So they're gonna be doing what is exemplary. They're gonna make sure they give a description, um, whatever, showing the highest level of performance. So this is just a guide to tell you, to explain how a rubric can be created. I have a, a website here, Ruby Star that for teachers um, is very good. You have templates there, you have good wording, just configure them, just make adjustments to them and use them because online the students must be guided. We don't leave them out there to wonder because they can't call you, they can't come to class and see you and whatever. And a lot of them are not interested in that. They want to be where they are and they want to be learning. So we have to provide for them everything that they need to work successfully online. So here is a planner that we can fill in the blanks, okay? The unit title, and here's the unit title. It's a review of anatomy and physiology, safety and ethical, legal, issues related to venipuncture, nursing. Then the topic is there, okay? Then the objectives, so all of these, this is just the beginning, the first line of the planner, maybe, maybe this is less than the first row of the planner, okay? Because whatever is in the objective must be played out here completely so all of what is gonna be we just put them in so it's a filling in but it's a careful filling in to make sure that the objectives are being met all right and the assessment goes here in the in the column if it's not a graded assessment you don't need to put it in the assessment um column it doesn't go there, it just stays on the learning activity if it's not a graded assessment, all right? So basically, that is how the planner is written. What we have that accompanies the planner after you have written it is called SME Checklist for Review of Planner. So here you're gonna be asked to just go through all of these to see just say yes or no if you have a comment, fine. It's an online document. You simply type in your response if you have any. I mean, this is especially useful for anybody who writes the course. But, for example, you didn't actually write it. You got somebody to help you to write the, the, the course, right? You have to use this now as the subject matter expert to see that everything here is taken care of because when it comes to this desk, I will have to go through to see that all of the, and I want the assurances from you too as a subject matter expert to see that all of what we're looking for is already there, right? For example, are there recommended available eBooks, you know, anything to help the students to feel as comfortable as possible. Don't think that we're doing the work for them. Don't think that they're lazy and they don't have to research and so research has its place. And I'm sure 
that time you'll ask them to research or whatever. But wherever we're presenting the content, we should make it as as easy, as accessible as possible for the students. All right. So the the checklist for review, it seems long, but it's just asking you to tell me it's a yes or no. So it can be pretty easy to fill out, but it takes us through all of the little aspects of the planner that should be worked on. So that's basically what I wanted to present to you today. And I'm now going to open for any questions, any comments, something you want to ask, something you want to share. Let me hear. Thank you, Miss uh, Williams. Yes, you're welcome. I was wondering, the uh, objectives that you mm -hmm. spoke about, there mm -hmm. would be the specific objectives, right? Yes, specific okay. objectives. All right. Mm -hmm. Because um, in the example, it was stated almost like general objective. That okay. um, demonstrates understanding. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that understanding there was what I was trying to question. Because it's not so measurable. How would I measure it when they demonstrate the understanding of it? Yeah. Um, okay. Well, like I said, we can always look to explore exactly what we mean to ask them and exactly the result we want. So that's always open you know, for discussion or across, you know, something to say, all right, how can they actually dis dis demonstrate understanding of this concept? So mm -hmm. if it means breaking it down into other objectives to get exactly what we want, we can do that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Uh, yes, hello. Hello. Um, I want to, it seems to me that this is very similar to what we are already doing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not seeing, I mean, it's, it's, I wonder what's the difference between what we are doing. Me. In terms of, in terms of your lesson planning, yes, and and how we we present and deliver our modules, right, without face to face. What what makes what makes this um this web delivery different from what we already do? Mm -hmm. So. I'm happy you said that because I don't want to seem, let it seem like it's a strange and way out um, idea that we have to do to make our lessons fully online, right? So I'm glad to know that what you're doing now and you incorporate a lot of um, online in your teaching. So that's good. But what I really want to see represented would be the learning activities. That is where the key point is for me, learning activities and the resources that we use to present those activities. So it might be some of the very same things that you use as your methods and activities, but that it has to be um, online, in the language of online and the context of online so that the students are able to click in order to get to what they want or they're able, whatever they're doing, they're doing it fully online. So the attention that would have to, because of the, everything, the foundation, the principles of teaching and learning that you have are the same things that I use, same ones that I have and want to pass on, okay? But then the, the method by which the students learn it, so for example, they have a face-to-face -face discussion. Online, they have what is a written discussion, really, right? But we wanted to take the same sense of them just talking and sharing ideas as it would online. So the big difference is just a method. The modality now is online, but this document has to represent exactly what I'm going to hold it and put it online. So everything that's there in every column, I will replicate that online because it's clear to say you're going to have them use that resource 
another resource but i would need a link i need to know where it's found i need to know what to put it in in order for the students to access it that's all um i think just following what is what your what you have shared today mm -hmm. um in reviewing our modules to put them in line with the new template from yes. OCBE. It seems that what you are saying is that if we all were to review our modules and to do it in the correct manner, and I'm guilty, I'm not doing it in the correct manner still, then any module we, we design or develop from here going forward in keeping with the new template format should automatically be available or be transferable for um internet face um for online. okay um i don't know if you're finished dr green but you're uh, i take it you're finished or you get no you're knocked off but your the answer to that question is that i'm not replacing whatever is there already. this document is specific to this office okay i'm sorry uh -huh. Oh, you. you got knocked off. <laughs> All right. So I was trying to say that this document is specific to ODL, specific to Office of Distance Learning. It's not meant to replace whatever OCDE has. Okay. But basically what's on your OCDE regular syllabus can easily be transferred, except we're going to now change some of the methodologies. We're changing the way that we present the content to the students. We're changing the way that they interact. We allow them to interact with the content. All right. And right, that method by which it's done. So it's not something to replace what's there. It's not, I'm not introducing something different from, you know, to say this is what you should use, not at all. Only for the online, only for when you're making a course that needs to be put online that must come through this office. Okay, I noticed Dr. Green is, is not on, but um, I'm sure I can tell her that another time. Any other question? Williams, there are some questions um, in the chat. From yes, I the chat. heard most of it. Sorry. Yeah, your internet. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. This quest, this one is very long, Sharika. <laughs> um, to read um, and answer at the same time. No question from my end. Um, I'm on here and well. Went blank, unable to hear. All right. So your question now. Thank you for your interest in information. In regards to getting students being more active in um, online classroom, what is your view on the use of blogs as an activity in online classroom? Another question is due is to do with the writing objectives. Just recently, there was a discussion on a new method of the absent of verbs or less focus. Um, writing objectives, I, I love that because it's, it's a very dynamic field and Dr. Onofulo can tell you. <laughs> uh, we learn new ideas of objectives all the time and, and um, some of us might be still in the old school a little, but it's a, it's a place to be to learn to write objectives. So wherever there, there's newness and there's, you know, development in that area that is welcome, I myself would need to do some more uh, catching up if I'm behind on objectives or you know getting it sorted out so objectives writing it the absence of verbs or less focus being placed on verbs in writing objectives so that's a discussion um we could explore I know that there are some specialists in the area so you know we can always but when it comes to getting students more active in online classroom um blogs is good and um the same forums that i talked about we can use as blogs just set them up as a blog uh, basically just getting them to to express their views about something and you know sharing ideas and all of that no problem that's a good way of getting students active mm -hmm. blogs forums just having them sharing so collaboration is key one of the things i probably didn't mention is that they can use 
off-site sources for collaboration. For example, uh, Google Docs. If they're writing a paper, you can encourage them to, to they can, probably won't be able to do it on um, UTech Online, but they're creating a document they can use a Google Docs, they can use, a, they're creating a spreadsheet, they can use Google for, um, what's the name of it, spreadsheet, in order to, to get that piece of work done. So, um, activity online, blogs, definitely, but everything else also. I hope that answered your question. All right, you're welcome. Anybody else? Listen, I just want to clarify something that mm -hmm. as far as assessment is concerned, mm -hmm. the verb is very important. You can't disregard that. Objectives, you mean? Yes, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you are disregarding it. I'm, re I'm yeah, reacting understand. to the comment mm -hmm. that was made mm -hmm. because it's the objective that will drive what you are assessing. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the ass assessment will be misplaced. Mm -hmm. For example, if yes. you say identify, and yet you don't pay attention to identify and probably you are looking at discussion or describing, then you have totally misplaced the, the assessment. Right. So emphasis should be on the verb because mm -hmm. that's what the teacher or the lecturer wishes to see in the student. And that's what should be assessed at the end of the, the learning um, mm -hmm. process. Yes. So whether there is a new way or old way, <laughs> the verb is still very, very, very important. Easy. Okay. Thanks for that. Okay, a question or two more. All right, I just want to thank you all for joining today. Um, this webinar was about planner writing. Planner is a document that we use to transfer what's on your paper-based syllabus or your face-to-face, -face, what you teach face-to-face, -to, -face, to what we want to see online. So we encourage use of resources that are online. So think you have to train, you have to come to know what is there on UTEC Online. All right, very interesting. Very, those persons who have trained here know that we have great tools that will enhance any online course, all right? So as soon as you're ready to begin writing your online courses, you may contact this office, all right? Thank you for joining and have a good afternoon. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. 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 Um, are we ready as a university?